The gentleman from Hennepin, Representative Winkler. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I don't think that was a point of order. I think that was just an irritation with what I said, um, which isn't a violation of the House rules, or if it did, I would have probably been bound and gagged and sent out of here a long time ago to some <laughs> applause on your side. <laughs> A veteran of the Minnesota House of Representatives, known for his sharp tongue debating style and playing a pivotal role in raising Minnesota's minimum wage, is stepping down. After nine years in the Minnesota House of Representatives, Representative Ryan Winkler announced he will resign sometime this summer. The DFLer from Golden Valley and his family are moving to Brussels, Belgium, where the global hotel management company his wife accepted a senior level job with is headquartered. Winkler will continue his non-legislative job at a biotechnology company in Egan, thus splitting his time between Minnesota and Belgium. Winkler sat down with us to explain his decision, his role as a legislator, and his future political aspirations. Thank you, Representative Winkler, for talking to us about your stepping down. Sure. Now, how did you reach this decision? Well, I reached it with my family. Uh, my uh, wife, Jenny, had a, has had a really great opportunity to take over a role as general counsel for a major hotel company in um, Europe, headquartered in Brussels, connected to Carlson Companies here in Minnesota, where she works now. And so this was a chance to uh, spend some time abroad to have our kids uh, learn a, a new culture and new languages and have an experience uh, that I think uh, any kid would be lucky to have. It was a big professional move for my wife and so for me it just seemed like uh, I had spent my nine years in the legislature and it was time to take a new opportunity, try a new path and see where that leads. You have served in the House since 2007 what specific pieces of legislation are you most proud of? The first major bill I worked on was as a first term member and that was the 35W Bridge Compensation Fund. And you know that was an issue where we had um, you know obviously a, a big disaster for the state with a big human toll and it was challenging because we knew that the people who were hurt in the bridge collapse would have uh, claims and lawsuits against the state in order to recover for their injuries but we also I felt like we had a responsibility to them to take care of them after our infrastructure failed and so it was a challenging legal situation it was a challenging environment to try to do justice for these people and it was not something we had ever done before in Minnesota or really any state and so spearheading that uh, creation of that fund as a first term member was a huge project to start out with as a, as a young member. I'd say the other one uh, I've worked on more recently and that's the minimum wage increase. And you know we uh, can have lots of discussion about all the reasons why the minimum wage is important but the thing that I feel is most important about it is that we in the end passed a bill that will index the minimum wage to inflation in the years ahead so that we will have a rising floor of wages across the whole economy instead of having that slowly decline over time as inflation eats away at it and the legislature has a hard time dealing with it. I feel like we finally put the, path, the state on a path of, of rising wages for everybody. What are you going to miss most about the House of Representatives? I think I'll miss the back and forth and the give and take of the debate uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, of course, you have opportunities to do some significant work from time to time. But most of my nine years has been in a context of divided government, uh, where Republicans have the governorship, but not the legislature, or the legislature, but not the governorship, or some of both. Uh, I've only two of the nine years I've served, we've had uh, one party uh, with control over all the branches. And then we could make significant progress. But most of the rest of the time, it's been a debate about whose vision for the future of the state is stronger and, and better. And I just really have enjoyed being part of those discussions and part of the back and forth. And um, I think that kind of legislative debate should be spirited and it should be 
pointed and it should be raising the issues, the core issues uh, for voters to consider. And uh, I've always felt like there was a role to play for me in the legislature in doing that. Do you think that this spirited debate served your constituents well? I do, uh, uh, at, at least uh, at my understanding of what my constituents most were looking for in state government. I think they were looking for a state government that was accountable for results, that was investing in education, that was uh, creating opportunity for more people. And I think without having a robust debate and a robust advocacy for those issues, uh, my constituents w would have less chance of, of seeing that happen. Do you feel like there's any unfinished business or other issues you wish you would have had longer to work on? Oh, endless. Um, you know, I carried this year a paid family leave bill to create an opportunity for all people through an insurance type program to be able to take paid leave after the birth of a child or to care for a sick family member or to take care of somebody themselves when they're sick. I think that is a huge issue for families across the state. I think it's a huge economic issue too. It helps keep uh, women especially more attached to the workforce and more likely to return to work. It creates more stability for families. It creates more opportunity for families to deal with challenges they have. Right now I feel like that's the biggest piece of unfinished business that I wish I could continue working on. But there are others as well. Uh, early childhood education is probably uh, the other major one I'd like to keep involved in. But uh, I'm hoping to stay in, to remain an advocate on those issues uh, when I'm back in Minnesota uh, over the next few years as well. Are there any lighthearted stories that happened in the legislature or something that you could share with us that made you smile? There are a number of uh, wonderful moments I remember from the House floor and exchanges between people. I remember debates between, for example, Tom Rukavina and Ron Earhart when Ron was still a Republican, uh, which were just wonderful. And um, exchanges I've had personally, you know, on the floor of the House where I might be uh, having it out with somebody and then going back in the retiring room afterwards and talk about what just happened and, and you know, complimenting each other or, uh, on the performance on the floor. It's just, it's a human place. And so much more happens here on a day-to-day -day basis because of the way people are feeling or the experiences they've just had. Sometimes it's just people trying to grapple with big issues and figure them out and doing their best. Even uh, if, the, if you don't agree or, or if it doesn't look too pretty. And um, I, I, I leave inspired by the House of Representatives probably more than I expected to when I came in.